Pastor was evangelizing. Good to have you back. How's did, your family? Did I miss that most humble of sermons? <laughs> <laughs> no, it be down in a few weeks, whatnot. Well, let's open up in, in prayer and uh, we take a look into our little study here and then have time of prayer. We just got some good stuff uh, yep. to pray about, as you notice, some new prayer items and things. Father, we just come before you tonight and we just thank you for this time that we can be here. I thank you for those that are here. And in spite of the time change and it seeming like it's already midnight, we thank you that you are the light of this world. And so we just thank you for that. Speak to our hearts. And then as we speak to you, touch our hearts. For I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 We uh, are looking at Psalm 103 tonight. Psalm 103. And a couple of weeks ago, I go through a psalm each morning. And uh, beyond my other, through the Bible reading and things. And so uh, when I went through Psalm 103, uh, God just touched me particularly. So I want to focus in on the first five verses. And I want to welcome those watching online, part of our study here. So good to have you. And uh, if you're uh, watching, just uh, click like or make a comment. Uh, we know that you're out there. It would be a blessing uh, for us. Uh, psalm 103, 1 through 5. I call it a psalm of God's magnificent mercy. And this thing is dynamite. I mean, uh, I mean, it's the atom bomb of, of, of mercy. So we're going to take a look. And let me read the first five verses. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget none of his benefits, who pardons all your iniquities, who heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from the pit, who crowns you with loving kindness and compassion, and who satisfies your years with good things so that your youth is renewed like the eagle. So what does it mean to bless the Lord? I mean, David is writing, and seven times in this psalm, uh, the term bless is used. And we know that the number seven is a great number in the Bible, a very uh, full and complete number. And so many things in sevens, seven sign miracles in John's Gospel, seven I am's. Book of Revelation is divided into three sevens of events, seven churches. Uh, seven, seven, seven. But to bless the Lord, bless the Lord, all my soul and all that is within me, bless his holy name. To bless the Lord uh, has the idea of bringing joy unto him through us. And you'll notice, bless the Lord, all my soul, verse one, it's an act of adoration and an approach to God in worship, and it deals with praise and thanksgiving. Praise and thanksgiving. Bless the Lord, O oh my sing. soul. We should sing that. Uh, bless the Lord, O oh my soul, all that is within me. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, you mm -hmm. know, Kennedy was doing a great job of it last Sunday at, after church. They were singing it all. Bless the Lord, O oh my <laughs> soul. A gorgeous voice. Yeah, bless the Lord. So it's an act of adoration, <laughs> approaching God in worship, praise, mm -hmm. and thanksgiving. So we receive God's blessings, but we can bless God from all that's within us, all that's inside of us, everything in us, the praise and honor and worship in praise and thanksgiving. So that is the, the basic gist of it. It ends with the word bless also. If you look at verse 22, the last sentence, it ends with bless the Lord, O my soul. Bless the Lord. So it's a bless the Lord, O my soul sandwich with two <laughs> ends and then a lot of <coughs> meat in the middle. But I want you to notice... Uh, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and do not forget none of his benefits. Bless the Lord, O my soul, do not forget any of his benefits. King James uses the term benefits. Uh, many of the modern translations use the term benefit. And, you know, what, what is meant by benefits? You know, when you think of benefits, what do you think of? 
you think of a job interview and then, you know, the <laughs> employer talks about all the benefits that they have or uh, you have insurance uh, of some kind and they list all the, the benefits and the riders and, and, and this. Uh, that's, of course, you know, if you, if you pay. Our benefits from God are free as far as our paying anything. It was paid for by Christ on the cross. But the word benefit in the Hebrew here is the word gemul. Gemul, which means the way God treats us. Now think of that. The way God treats us and his acts of goodness his benefits when we think of benefits you know, that's kind of like yeah okay insurance and job and you're getting this and gemul in hebrew literally means good treatment good, the way god treats us and uh, it, it's important uh, for us how we treat people and how we treat people often shows a lot of our our character and and things uh, there we see here that we have five who's in verse 3 4 and 5 five who's who the one who blesses us and the one who benefits us with great treatment he treats us right he treats us right with his acts of goodness First of all, verse 3, he pardons all your iniquities. He pardons. He pardons not just a few, not just some, not just the kind of light stuff, the light sins, you know. And the Old Testament uh, is very graphic in its description of sin. A lot of words are used. Uh, wickedness, abomination, iniquity, unrighteousness, uh, rebellion. The New Testament sums it up with the idea in Romans 3.23, for all have sinned, it means missing the mark. It's a term of archery. Have you ever shot a bow and arrow? Or when you were a kid, you take a twig and you get string and then you bend the little, the long branch, a long twig, make your own bow and arrow, or just a professional type bow and arrow, or you, you know. Uh, during the Vietnam War, the Viet Cong enemy were fighting some of us with bows and arrows. They did not have the high especially out in uh, insurrection, you know, jungle war. They didn't have some of the high tech. I, I, and did they have it uh, pointed? Yeah. Made it. They either had buffalo excrement or some kind of poisonous stuff or something, mm -hmm. you know, uh, you know, <laughs> at us. Uh, but he pardons all our iniquity. So various terms in the area of sin, iniquity, in the Old Testament, describing sin means to be twisted, to be, to be twisted, to twist the things of God, iniquity. Another term uh, used for sin in the Old Testament is the term trespass, uh, trespass, uh, trespass. And uh, that means going beyond the boundaries that God has set, going beyond the boundaries that, that God has set, to trespass. And then abomination is utter extreme wickedness, either involving homosexuality, I have to preach the truth, and involving demonic or Satan or uh, sacrifice of children in worship. These were called abominations. And the beauty of, of the benefits of Christ shedding his blood, he... God, who pardons all your iniquities, he pardons them, all of them, even when we miss the mark, we miss God's bullseye. Then it says here that uh, he is the one who heals all your diseases. This is not just limited to physical illness and diseases. We know everybody's going to die. Hebrews 9.27 says, It is appointed unto us once to die, then comes the judgment. No purgatory, no second chance, no reincarnation, no transmigration of the souls, and this and that. Uh, we, we face him, and uh, there is just one death, and not as many as the modern New Age thinker loves reincarnation, because it gives you a second chance without responsibility. It gives you a second chance and you could blow it off. Okay, the next life, I'm, you know, but that, that doesn't happen. 
but this isn't just only iniquities in the sense of of sin he pardons but then he heals diseases and this is also spiritual diseases having spiritual diseases critical spirit bitterness anger judgmentalism these kind of spiritual illnesses gossip uh, things like that so he heals uh, this is the second who who heals all your diseases the the third who he redeems us from the pit some bibles will say he delivers us from destruction from the the pit the the, the pit one of the psalms talked about how he was deep in the miry pit john bunyan john bunyan who uh who was a slave trader talked about how he came out of the miry pit and uh, his autobiography about his new life in Christ was called out of the pit out of the pit and uh, so he he heals this this God his benefits he pardons he heals verse 4 here's the third who he redeems your life from the pit, and then he crowns you with loving kindness and compassion. Who crowns us? I want you to imagine tomorrow morning when you wake up and whatever your routine is, when you first look in the mirror, whether you're brushing your teeth, combing your hair, or just looking and saying, Oh no, <laughs> you know, like I do some mornings. Imagine a crown on you. I want you to, seriously, and those of you watching on the internet, I, I want you to imagine a crown on you because it says he redeems our life from the pit. He crowns us. He crowns you with loving kindness and compassion. Loving kindness and compassion. This might be a Hebrew parallelism where they repeat a thought of great value. Loving kindness and compassion is similar. The word loving kindness in the Hebrew is the Hebrew word hesed, H-E-S-E-D, hesed. It is the same as agape in the New Testament, John 3.16, for God so agape the world. And that's sacrificial love, that's love without boundaries, and that's love because God is love. He, he, he doesn't just have love, he is love. 1 John 4, 7, 4, 8, 4, 10. Uh, so, hesed, hesed, loving kindness, literally means two things. And uh, it, it involves our skin, believe it or not. The first one is that God gets, he knows us so well, it's as if he is in our skin, under the skin. That's God's loving kindness towards us. He, he, he knows. Now imagine, the Bible says that the very hairs of our head are counted, and the very steps that we've taken so far in our life are counted. We don't know how many steps we've taken in our life. And unless you're like my son Dawson, who shaves his head, he has no hair to count. <laughs> and, you know, I don't know if you guys are watching, or Darcy, you're watching, you know, or... Uh, I've always told him, I said, son, grow your hair out. you got nice hair. You, you know, there's going to come a day in time that you, you might not have that much, kind of like me, you know, male pattern baldness and all that and, and the, the thing in the back and, and everything. But God knows every time we, we lose a hair, if there's one in the sink, if there's one in the shower, in the drain, and there's two or three, God, God takes that into account. And the number of steps we've taken, he, he knows right now, you know, 7,389,000, 89, 90, 91, 92. We don't know that. Now, the, the thing is, see, the thing is, if God knows that much about up here that, you know, and knows the very bottom of our feet, how much more? Just think of it. How much more is he concerned with what's inside of us? God looketh at the heart. God looks at the heart. God knows. He knows what's inside, and he cares about that. Notice verse 4, who crowns you with loving kindness and compassion. 
loving kindness and compassion. The New Testament word for compassion is to feel it in your stomach. That's literally what it means. It's a, it's a very complicated, multi-syllabic word. It's stroich and it, it means you feel it in your stomach. Have you ever had nerves and you could feel it like in the pit of your stomach or, or something? Or when the young high schooler sees, uh, you know, the pretty girl he has a crush on going by the locker and just kind of hangs, you know, he feels it. In a, he feels something in his stomach or maybe nerves or, or whatnot. But that's what compassion is, is to feel it inside. And that's what God has given to us. These, these are his benefits. And forget none of his benefits. Remember, uh, remember, don't forget what God has, uh, has blessed you with and what he's done for you. And uh, so he pardons all your iniquities. He heals all your diseases. He redeems your life from the pit. He crowns you with loving kindness and compassion. So tomorrow morning, first look in the mirror. Just imagine there's a crown. Now, I remember an old TV show. Uh, it was called Queen for a Day with Jack Bailey as the host. Mm -hmm. I used to watch it at my grandmother's house during the summer when I would stay at my grandma grandpa. And Jack Bailey comes out, and there's a lady, she gets prizes, and then Jack Bailey says, you are queen for a day. And if you remember, as I remember, they actually put a crown on her. She had a crown, because mm -hmm. uh, she was queen for a day. Our crown does not fade away. Our crown is not just for a day. Mm -hmm. Babe Ruth, there was a famous photo of Babe Ruth when he hit all those home runs, wearing a crown, and his nickname is the Sultan of Swat. <laughs> the Sultan of Swat, they have the, the, the crown and, and, and things. Uh, you see pictures and drawings and paintings and portraits of, of kings with a crown. Even the Pope, the TR, the three-tiered crown that, that, that he, he wears. Uh, the best crown is this one. He crowns us. So see yourself all day tomorrow wearing a crown. Wearing a crown. <laughs> then the last who. The last who is in verse 5. Forget none of his benefits, who pardons all your iniquity, heals all your diseases, not just some, but all. He redeems your life from the pit, crowns you with loving kindness and compassion. He satisfies your years with good things. They say that the number one most popular rock and roll song in the world it's so always number one on the top 100 list is a song by the Rolling Stones called I Can't Get No Satisfaction. I Can't Get No Satisfaction. It's got a fuzz <laughs> guitar hook, kind of a clever hook, and I Can't Get No Satisfaction. Well, look what it says. Uh, you know, and I have, I have Mick Jagger on my prayer list that he be saved, and that perhaps a, a man like Bono can, or Van Morrison, that yeah. are believers, can impact him and, and reach him. But notice it says he satisfies your years with good things. It's a constant and a progressive. He satisfies your years with good things. That's as we get older and as we age. But then notice so that your youth is renewed like the eagle. There's the ancient theory of the phoenix or the molting eagle that they rise Isaiah 40, 31, they that wait upon the Lord shall mount up as with eagle's wings. They will run, not get tired. They will walk and not get weary. And Isaiah 40, 31 is one of the great promises in the Bible and one of the great chapters of the Bible. Chapter 40. Chapter 40 of the book of Isaiah begins the New Testament part section of the book of Isaiah. The book of Isaiah, by the way, has 66 books. The Old Testament has 39 books. The New Testament has 27 books. The first 39 books of the book of Isaiah are like the Old Testament with prophetic judgments. Starting with verse 40 and up to verse 66, 27 chapters like the New Testament. It begins in Hebrew with the words, Nahamu Nabu, Dabaru Alev Yerushalayim in Hebrew. Comfort, comfort my people. Nahamu, Nahamu. Comfort, comfort my people. Speak upon the heart of Jerusalem. Because of God's grace, 
instead of the area of judgment. The prophet, very rare that a prophet gives a message of comfort. But it says comfort, comfort. It says the Lord, comfort, comfort, comfort. The most amazing thing about Isaiah chapter uh, 20, uh, chapters 40 to 66, those 27 chapters, the very dead center chapter is Isaiah 53, which talks about the cross, that uh, he's the shepherd and we like sheep have gone astray. It was by his stripes he was wounded for our sins. And dead center in that New Testament-like section of the book of Isaiah, dead center is, is the atonement, that great Isaiah 53 chapter. And that goes to show that the cross is the center of all things. Christ is the center of all things. John 3.16 in the King James Bible has 25 words. 12, 1, and 12. First 12 talk about God. The last 12 talk about us. And the one word in the middle, the word Son. Every word before the word Son talks about God the Father. Every word after the word Son talks about us. 12 words, 12 words, and the one word son, dead center in the middle. And that just shows we need to put Christ at the center of our lives. Christ in, in, in the middle of, of everything. And Christ is the center. He's the center of time. Why is it 2019? Why is it 2019 in our 80. Western calendar? Amino Amen Domini, the year of our Lord. The year of Christ's coming. Uh, life is split. And time is split by a wedge of wood in the ground on Mount Calvary. He divides time. He divides time. And Christ is at the center of all things. But notice, he satisfies your ears with good things so that your youth is renewed like the eagle. That's just the introduction. And I'm just going to take just a few, few brief minutes uh, you'll notice, number two, the five who's. We see, verse eight, the Lord is merciful. The Lord is merciful and gracious. And then, slow to anger and abounding in loving kindness. Slow to anger. We, we, we think God is always angry. We talk about the flood and he destroyed. No, God didn't do it out of anger. He did it out of grief. He was grieved over the sin of mankind. And, you know, interestingly enough, Jesus said that before he returns, that the days shall be like the days of Noah. Under Noah's days, there was a population explosion. We're experiencing a massive population explosion. There was, it says in there in Genesis 6 that there was violence, violence in the land. The, do you know the Hebrew word for violence in the Old Testament is the word Hamas? Uh, does that ring a bell? Yeah. Hamas. There was violence. Uh, there was some um, bad sexuality, sexual abuse, and a whole variety of things. Uh, but it says here that the Lord has mercy. The, the Lord is merciful. And then it ends plenteous in mercy. Plenteous in mercy. Verse 11, uh, there's, there's more mercy. It says here, for as high as heaven is above the earth, so great is his mercy toward them who fear him. Uh, that's beautiful. Fear means reverential respect, that we're awed. It's the same kind of fear that when a cop car is behind us and we notice it in the rearview mirror. And that we make sure we fly right. We make sure that we're doing the right mileage. We make sure that we have our blinker on if we're making a turn and this kind of thing. Uh, it's an awe and respect that comes out of, out of love. And then he goes on to say, as far as the east is from the west, so far has removed our transgressions from us. Transgression is the same thing as trespass, trans, crossing over, you know, transportation, trans-Pacific, trans, it's crossing over God's line. It says here, as far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed his transgression from us. Something interesting about geography on planet Earth. You have a North Pole and a South Pole, magnetic pole and, and, and everything. Uh, when you walk around the world, let's say, north to south, you will hit a point when you hit the North Pole that you will be walking south. 
and then you'll be walking north when you hit the South Pole. As far as the east is from the west, first of all, there's no eastern pole or western pole. And as you walk across the earth going north and south, you go through what is north and you go through what is south. But think of this, when you walk east to west, you're always walking east or you're always walking west. It, there, there is no transition. And because there's no east-west pole, east and west spreads out to infinity, infinity. That's how far he's removed our sin. Verse 13, just as a father has compassion on his children, so the Lord has compassion on those who fear him. He knows our frame. He is mindful that we are dust. We are dust. That's what we are, beloved dust. So as I, as I wrap this up, I want you to think of this. It's kind of funny, maybe silly. Uh, I'm not Danny Daniels. I'm dust unit. Danny. <laughs> and each one of you can title yourself as dust unit and your name because that's what we are. Yeah. We are, he, but you know what? He's mindful that we are dust, but we are beloved dust. Verse 17, I'll close with that and, and then with 20 to 22. Verse 17, we see once again his, his, his mercy, but the mercy of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting our everlastings from eternity past to eternity forward just imagine that from eternity past to eternity forward now we can kind of have a concept of eternity forward you know it's a long time it's ahead but sometimes uh you know even if you understand i i you know einsteinian formulas and things uh but eternity past god has loved us not to 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90 or so years we've been on planet Earth. God has loved us from eternity past. He knew us. He knows us. He prepared us. We are here at this point in time for because of his will. He wants us to be at this point in time. It might be being part of the second coming of Christ. Uh, John Wesley had a great answer when he was asked, you know, how do you live your life? How, how, how would you live your life if you knew Christ was returning tonight? And John Wesley said, I live my life every day as if Christ was returning that night, but I work and pray in the vineyard as if Christ was coming back in a thousand years. It's a pretty decent answer by good old John Wesley. You know, his life spanned a whole 1700s. He was born 1703, died 1788. His life spanned the whole, almost the whole uh, 1700s. But notice, everlasting to everlasting. In some of my Bibles, I've gone ahead up by Genesis 1-1, and I've written Genesis 0-0, and I've underlined it. Genesis 0-0, and I've underlined it. Then, verse 20, 21, 22, for a bless. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord, all you, his host. Bless the Lord, all you works of his, in the places of his dominion. Bless the Lord, Oh, my soul. So this is a psalm of God's magnificent mercy to us. It's a beautiful psalm. It's just the one you can't get enough of. You just can't. And I'm sure all of you have heard parts and snippets of this beautiful psalm. So not only tomorrow do I want you to look in the mirror first thing in the morning or whenever and notice that you have a crown. Second, realize that you're a dust unit. <laughs> dust unit and your name and then third that tomorrow you can bring joy to God you can bless him you can you can bless the Lord all oh my soul and all that's within me well thank you so much for those of you watching God bless you uh, just hit a like or hit a, or give a, a message we do look at those and we're just so glad and by the way church services at 1045 this Sunday, we have adult Bible class, Sunday school classes, uh, and things that, that starts at 9.15. Love to have you. God bless you, or Makarios.